Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for October 8th, 2020. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. You created the day and the night, O God. You set the sun and the moon in their places. You set the limits of the earth. You made summer and winter. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Merciful God, we give thanks that through the gift of our baptism you offer the forgiveness of sin and wash us clean from all evil. By the power of your Holy Spirit, renew our lives and make us worthy to enter into your eternal sanctuary. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our hymn for today is one of my favorite recently is Lift Every Voice and Sing. It is to Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is a regular by J. Rosamond Johnston from 1921. It is written by James Weldon Johnson, 1921. I have to look and see if there's any relation there. All right. Every voice and sing till it then heaven ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies, and let it resound as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith of the dark as the Readings for today are Exodus chapter 28 and through 30. Um, so God is continuing to give this law and sort of uh, specifically kind of how the, the cultic religious practices are going to work for the people of God from this point on. And so this is the institution of the priesthood. Listen to God's word to speak to you. Then bring near to you your brother Aaron and his sons with him from among the Israelites to serve me as priests. Aaron and Aaron's son, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar, you shall make sacred vestments for the glorious adornment of your brother Aaron, and you shall speak to all who have, a, have ability, whom I have endowed with skill, that they make Aaron's vestments to consecrate him for my priesthood. These are the vestments that they shall make a breast piece, an ephod, a robe, 
a checkered tunic, a turban, and a sash. When they make these sacred vestments for your brother Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests, they shall use gold, blue, purple, and crimson yard, and fine linen. They shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and of fine twisted linen, skillfully worked. It shall have two shoulder pieces attached to its two edges, so that it may be joined together. The decorated band on it shall be of the same workmanship and materials of gold, of blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and of fine twisted linen. You shall take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel. Six of their names on one stone, and the names of the remaining six on the other stone, in the other in the order of their birth. As a gem cutter engraves signets, so you shall engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel. You shall mount them in settings of gold filigree. You shall set the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders for remembrance. You shall make settings of gold filigree and two chains of pure gold twisted like cords, and you shall attach the corded chains to the settings. You shall make a breast piece of judgment. In skilled work, you shall make it in the style of the ephod of gold, of blue and purple and crimson yarns, and of fine twisted linen you shall make it. It shall be square and doubled, a span in length and a span in width. You shall set it in four rows of stones, a row of carnelian, Chorosolite and emerald shall be the first row, the second row turquoise, a sapphire, and a moonstone, and a third row jacinth, and agite, and amethyst, and the fourth row a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold filigree. There shall be twelve stones with names corresponding to the names of the sons of Israel. They shall be like signets, each engraved with its name, for the twelve tribes. You shall make for the breastpiece chains of pure gold, twisted like cords, and you shall make for the breastpiece two rings of gold, and put the two rings on the two edges of the breastpiece. You shall put the two cords of gold on the two rings at the edges of the breastpiece. The two ends of the two cords you shall attach to the two settings, and so attach it to the front, to the shoulder pieces of the ephod. You shall make two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastpiece on its inside edge next to the ephod. You shall make two rings of gold and attach them in front of the lower part of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod at its joining above the decorated band of the ephod. The breast piece shall be bound by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a blue cord so that it may lie on the decorated band of the ephod and so that the breast piece shall not come loose from the ephod. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel in the breast piece of judgment on his heart when he goes into the holy place for a continual remembrance before the Lord. In the breastpiece of judgment you shall put the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be on Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. Thus Aaron shall bear the judgment of the Israelites on his heart before the Lord continually. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. It shall have an opening for the head in the middle of it, with a woven binding round the opening like the opening of a coat of mail, so that it may not be torn. On its lower hem you shall make a pomegranate of blue, purple, and crimson yarns all around the lower hem, with bells of gold between them all around. A golden bell and a pomegranate alternating all around the lower hem of the robe. Aaron shall wear it when he ministers, and it shall sound, its sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, so that he might not die. You shall make a rosette of pure gold and engrave on it like the engraving of a signet, holy to the Lord. You shall fasten it on the turban with blue cord. It shall be on the front of the turban. It shall be in Aaron, on Aaron's forehead. And Aaron shall take on himself any guilt incurred in the holy offering that the Israelites consecrate as the sacred donations. It shall always be on his forehead in order that they may find favor before the Lord. You shall make the checkered tunic of fine linen. And you shall make a turban of fine linen. And you shall make a sash embroidered with needlework. For Aaron's sons, you shall make tunics and sashes and headdresses. You shall make for them their glorious adornment. You shall put them on your brother Aaron and on his sons with him and shall anoint them and ordain them and consecrate them so that they may serve me as priests. You shall make for them linen undergarments to cover their naked flesh. They shall reach from the hips to the thighs. Aaron and his sons shall wear them when they go into the tent of meeting or when they come near the altar 
to minister in the holy place, or they will bring guilt on themselves and die. This shall be a perpetual ordinance for him and for his descendants after him. Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them, so that they may serve me as priests. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened wafers spread with oil. You shall make them of choice wheat flour. You shall put them on in one basket and bring them in the basket and bring the bull and the two rams. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then you shall take the vestments and put on Aaron the tunic and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastpiece and the girt him with decorated band of the ephod. And you shall set the turban on his head and put the holy diadem on the turban. You shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. Then you shall bring his sons and put tunics on them. You shall gird them with sashes and tie headdresses on them. And the priesthood shall be theirs by a perpetual ordinances ordinance. You shall then ordain Aaron and his sons. You shall bring the bull in front of the tent of meeting. Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the bull, and you shall slaughter the bull before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And you shall take some of the blood of the bull and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger, and, at, and all the rest of the blood you shall pour out at the base of the altar. You shall take all the fat that covers the entrails and the appendage, appendage of the liver and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them and turn them into smoke on the altar. But the flesh of the bull and its skin and its dung you shall burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Then you shall take one of the rams, and Aaron and his son shall lay their hand on the head of the ram, and you shall slaughter the ram and shall take its blood and dash it against all sides of the altar. Then you shall cut the ram into its parts and wash its entrails and its legs and put them with its parts and its head and turn the whole ram into smoke on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord. It is a pleasing odor, an offering by fire to the Lord. You shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on the head of the ram, and you shall slaughter the ram and take some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear and on the lobes of the right ears of his sons and on the thumbs of the right hands and on the big toes of the right feet and dash the rest of the blood against all the sides of the altar. Then you shall take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his vestments and on his sons and his sons' vestments with him. Then he and his vestments shall be holy as well as his sons and his sons' vestments. You shall also take the fat of the ram, the fat tail, the fat covers, the entrails, the appendage of the liver, the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, and the right thigh, for it is a ram of ordination, and one loaf of bread, one cake of bread made with oil, one wafer, and one basket of unleavened bread that is before the Lord. And you shall place all these in the palms of Aaron and on the palms of his sons, and raise them as an elevation offering before the Lord. Then you shall take them from their hands and turn them into smoke on the altar on top of the burnt offerings of pleasing odor before the Lord. It is an offering by fire to the Lord. You shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's ordination and raise it as an elevation offering before the Lord, and it shall be your portion. You shall consecrate the breast that is was raised as an elevation offering and the thigh that was raised as an elevation offering from the ram of ordination. From that which belongs to Aaron and his sons, these things shall be a perpetual ordinance for Aaron and his sons from the Israelites. For this is an offering, and it shall be an offering by the Israelites from their sacrifice of offering of well-being, their offering to the Lord. The sacred vestments of Aaron shall be passed on to his sons after him. They shall be anointed in them and ordained in them. The son who is priest in his place shall wear for them set for seven days when he comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place. You shall take the ram of ordination and boil its flesh in a holy place, and Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket at the entrance of the tent of meeting. They themselves shall eat the food by which the atonement is made, to ordain and consecrate them. But no one else shall eat of them, because they are holy. If any of the flesh of the for the ordination, or of the bread, remains until the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten, because it is holy. Thus you shall do to Aaron and his sons, just as I have commanded you. Over seven days you shall ordain them. Also every day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement. Also you shall offer a sin offering for the altar. 
when you make atonement for it and shall anoint it to consecrate it. For seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it, and the altar shall be most holy. Whatever touches the altar shall become holy. Now this is what you shall offer on the altar, two lambs a year old regularly each day. One lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer in the evening. And with the first lamb, one-tenth of a measure of choice flour mixed with one-fourth of a hin of beaten oil and one-fourth of a hin of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb you shall offer in the evening, and you shall offer it with a grain offering and its drink offering as in the morning, for a pleasing odor, an offering by fire to the Lord. It shall be a regular burnt offering throughout the generations at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet you. To speak to you there, I will meet with the Israelites there, and it shall be sanctified by my glory. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. Aaron also and his sons I will consecrate to serve me as priests. I will dwell among the Israelites, and I will be their God, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. You shall make an altar on which to offer incense. You shall make of it Make it of acacia wood. It shall be one cubit long and one cubit wide. It shall be square and it shall be two cubits high. Its horn shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold, its top and its sides all around, and its horns, and you shall make it for a molding of gold all around, and you shall make two golden rings for it. Under its mound molding on two opposite sides of it, you shall make them, and they shall hold the poles with which to carry it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall place it in front of the curtain, that is, above the Ark of the Covenant, in front of the mercy seat, that is, over the covenant where I will meet you. Aaron shall offer fragrant incense on it every morning. When he dresses the lamps, he shall offer it. And when Aaron sets up the lamps on the evening, he shall offer it, a regular incense offering before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer unholy incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a grain offering, and you shall not pour a drink offering on it. Once a year Aaron shall perform the rite of atonement on its horns. Throughout your generations you shall perform an atonement for it once a year with the blood of the atoning sin offering. It is most holy to the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses. When you take the census of the Israelites to register them, at registration all of them shall give a ransom for their lives to the Lord, so that no plague may come upon them for being registered. This is what each one is is registered shall give, half shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is 20 geras. Half a shekel is an offering to the Lord. Each one who is registered from 20 years old and upward shall give the Lord's offering. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than the half shekel. When you bring this offering to the Lord to make atonement for your lives, you shall take the atonement money from the Israelites and shall designate it for the service of the tent of meeting. Before the Lord it shall be a reminder of the Israelites of the ransom given for your lives. The Lord spoke to Moses, You shall make a bronze basin and a bronze, uh, with a bronze stand for washing. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it. With the altar, Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister to make an offering by fire to the Lord, they shall wash with water so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet so that they may not die. It shall be a perpetual ordinance for them, for him and for his descendants throughout their generation. The Lord spoke to Moses, take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet-smelling cinnamon, half as much, that is 250, and 250 of aromatic cane, and 500 of cassia. Measure it by the sanctuary shekel and a hin of olive oil, and you shall make of these a sacred anointing oil blended as by a perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tent of meeting and the Ark of the Covenant, and the table, and all its utensils, and the lampstands, and its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with its utensils, and the basin with its stand, and you shall consecrate them, so that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, in order that they may serve me as priests. You shall say to the Israelites, This shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. You shall not be used in any ordinary anointing of the body, and you shall make no other like it in in composition. 
it is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on an unqualified person, shall be cut off from the people. The Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, stacti and onica and galbanum, sweet spices with pure frankincense in equal parts of each, and make an incense blended as by a perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy, and you shall beat some of it into the powder, and put part of it before the covenant in, in the tent of meeting where I shall meet you. It shall be for you most holy. When you make incense according to this composition, you shall not make it for yourselves. It shall be regarded by you as holy to the Lord. Whoever makes any like it to use as perfume shall be cut off from the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. First of all, thanks for sticking me with me through that. Um, this is a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of details in here. Um, we're going to go over sort of the, the broad sweeping stuff, but I acknowledge that this is not the most sort of um, uh, exciting and, and engaging content ever. But, you know, it's also important. Um, so God is setting up this priestly uh, order. Right, Aaron is going to be the first priest, and then his sons are going to succeed after him. So, or sussy, or yeah, whatever. Um, that's important to know that that for the Jewish people, this is a um, it's a family thing. It is this particular tribe. They are marked as as holy. They are to be the priests. There are certain things that come up throughout the law that we're, we're actually going to be skipping over, but things like. You know, that they don't actually get their own land. They get cities within the land. They're kind of spread out, that sort of thing. But we have this institution, all of these sort of very symbolic things, these vestments that the priests are to wear. So you might notice some, some important things about um, not only these stones on the shoulders, but also stones on the breastplate, plate, the ephod, that are to symbolize and, in fact, are inscribed with the names of the people of Israel, all of the different tribes. Um, this is important because they are coming, that's the role of a priest is to mediate between God and the rest of the people, right? So they are coming before God and they are bearing with them the names of all of the tribes who are, they are basically representing before God. There's also a whole lot about sacrificing and all this sort of stuff. And, and this is in fact, mostly just sacrificing for the ordination, initial ordination, um, and for sort of consecrating the, the, the altar and the starting to consecrate the temple. And then we kind of slide into the sacrifice of atonement, which is to be done every year. There's also a daily sacrifice of a lamb in the morning and in the evening. There's a lot of sacrifices. There's a lot of blood. There's a lot of just kind of gross stuff that we would, in the 21st century America, we look at this and go, oh, this is barbaric. This is crazy. Um, one thing to remember is that sacrifice, uh, blood sacrifice, burnt offerings, all that sort of thing um, were very much the way that people worshiped in the, in the day. So that was, so this is very much a, God is, is using the worship and the, um, the religious practices of the, the day and using it for God's purposes instead of others. There are clear stipulations about, um, about what kind of animals, all that sort of stuff, they're to be killed in humane ways. In fact, today there are rabbis who, that's, that is their training, is to make sure that things are kosher, that things are, if, if you're, if you're slaughtering animals, that you're doing so in a way that is very humane. It is very um, um, appropriate that the, the animal is not suffering, that sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of symbolism here of, first of all, blood. And we've seen blood quite a bit already through the Old Testament. But blood, again, back to Genesis, is this, this uh, life force. This, um, the life of the animal is in the blood. And so God asks for the lifeblood of any who sins, of any who falls short of God's glory. Um, and so this animal is literally dying on our behalf so that, so that the sinner 
so that you know this priest that is consecrated so the people of of israel so that we presumably if we were part of this our sins would result in the death of an animal instead of our own death there's there's this sort of substitutionary um, work so this animal is slaughtered on our behalf and its blood is used because this is a sacred and holy thing to to consecrate it's sort of this counter uh, intuitive thing where this blood is actually making the altar clean, where it's 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 um, consecrating it. It is making it holy. Um, that's the purpose of this blood sacrifice. It's th the whole idea of this substitution. This this animal is dying on behalf of you. Instead of you dying because of your sin, this animal is dying. And so there's this constant, continual sort of sacrifice because people are continually sinning. Um, there's this continual offering to God. There are special offerings for the beginning of this, um, of this ordination and all that sort of thing. But there's also continual sacrifices daily and um, that yearly day of atonement so that, that the, the, the sins of the people and the priests specifically are are covered that um, that they can be holy before God. They can be righteous before God. They can again be in that right relationship with God. Again, the whole purpose for all of this is that we meet righteous. That we um, as humans be in right relationship with God and one another and with all of creation. And so part of that is is these cultic sacrifice practices. That this blood um, that is shed takes the place for us. Obviously, we as Christians, we hear that in a very different way than the Jewish people. Um, we hear the Lamb of God who takes away the world, Jesus, God made flesh, bleeding and dying for us, so that by that blood we can be saved. That is actually the whole point. Um, this is really God getting God's people ready for the coming of Messiah getting God's people ready for his coming into the world to be an atoning sacrifice, a lamb slaughtered for the sins of the world, and they're already going to be sort of in that mindset that this is something that is possible. Now, you know there is no human sacrifice in Judaism. It just does not exist. It's not a, it's not a thing. Um, this is where there is a stark divergence from the other religions and the other practices around them. That where there's lots of sacrifices going on around them, very similar, it's also human sacrifice as well as animals. Um, and so there's sort of a marked difference there. So there we go. That, that's kind of the priesthood. That's sort of the role. I'm going to attach a video as well for more information about this. But um, yeah, just be thinking about this is the, the idea. This is as, as the people of God are called to be holy, set, set apart, righteous, right, clean, pure, um, these priests, because they're the, the ones who are interacting with God, have to be that as well. And for them, the stakes are very high. You notice that the high priest, um, he, the hem of his robe is covered in bells. Well, this is because if he goes into the temple and has not been properly, his sins have not been properly atoned for, he will be struck down dead. Um, and it became the common practice that they would tie a rope to someone's leg when, they, when the high priest goes in on the Day of Atonement, um, and they would listen for those bells. And if they heard the bells stopping, then they would pull on the rope and pull his body out so then somebody else could be ordained as high priest and go in and do that Day of Atonement. Lucky you, right? Um, so stakes are pretty high. Um, God takes sin very seriously, but also gives God's people a way to deal with them, um, a way, way to, to communicate with God in a way that makes them safe, right? They're, they're covered, they're, they are holy, these priests are able to go through these practices so that they're ritually clean, so that they can come into the presence of God and mediate with God and um, for the people. So that's the idea. That's what's going on here. Thanks for sticking with me. Next week, we're going to be in 1 Samuel, a lot more, uh, uh, yeah, a lot more story driven. But thanks for sticking with me. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer.
Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We praise you, God, our Creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. Especially we thank you for the ministry of all the baptized. Those who provide for public safety and well-being. Those with whom we work or share common concerns. Opportunities to share good news with others. The treasure stored in every human life. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks that Bill is continuing to recover from cataract surgery and is getting better. And we continue to lift up our stewardship campaign. We dare to pray for others, God, our Savior, claiming your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world, committing ourselves to care for others in his name. Especially we pray for the church in Asia and the Middle East. Those who seek to save the earth from destruction. Those who work for the benefit of others. Those who cannot work today. All who proclaim your saving love. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Mike's cousin, Michelle. For hurricane victims, fire victims, and victims of COVID-19, both in health and jobs. We also lift up one continued unspoken request. We lift up the neighbors of the Garlands, Mickey and Betty, and Vanessa, who had stomach surgery on Monday. As you cause the sun to rise, O God, bring the light of Christ to dawn in our souls and dispel the shadows of hatred and fear. Give us grace to reflect Christ's glory and let his love show in our deeds. His peace shine in our words and his healing in our touch. That all may give him praise now and forever. Amen. Now let us continue to praise him in the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button. Also, um, go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Our liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. Our liturgy, or that is our liturgy, our scriptures came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a very blessed day, and we'll see you next time.